Hello, and welcome back to the next episode in this series, how to leverage your VST library using Bespoke Synth, or how to make Dark Fifth style Bespoke Synth patches. Okay, in the first episode, we learned how to do some basics. In this episode, we're going to learn how to do a little bit more. If you want to review anything, you can go back to that episode, but we're not going to do much review of those particular details here. All right, let's put it in. We already know how to make note sequencer. This guy is going to sequence our instrument. We're going to put it in our instrument, which for tutorial purposes is the Ample Percussion Cloud Drum, link in the description. It shows up as APC here. And then we want to control this fellow. Okay, now we have all the tools here we need in order to make a little bit of noise. So this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make more specific random choices. When you're organizing the structure of a generative piece, it's a balance between what's happening totally randomly and what's happening according to some kind of rules you've created. So we're gonna create more particular rules, controls, sequences. <laughs> I'm just saying rule as a, abstract concept, things that we're going to do to influence this generative track. So let's take a closer look at the note sequencer. If you click down here in the corner, you can drag this out and reveal these options here. These are ways to affect the behavior of these random controls, these triggers. If we tell our control sequencer here, uh, I'm going to set this guy the the setting I typically use for a control sequencer out of the box is to set it to a half note. It's a good amount of time between changes to a given control. You can make it finer or you can make it more uh, coarse. You know, maybe you want to do really long changes and so you'll use eight notes per count. We're going to use half notes here. And I'm just going to set this to four for the time being, so that this changes over relatively quickly for tutorialized speed purposes. We're gonna set it to the velocity. Now we've told us control sequencer. I'm gonna say here, the beginning uh, of this sequence, change the velocity. Just send a velocity control. So if this was empty, it would the velocity would fill every single thing here, but the reason why it does that is because the random velocity density is set to one. If we want this to fill in less densely, we can set the velocity down to say 0.19. Now, whenever it receives the command, it's gonna fill this more or less that percentage. Now, let's say at different times you want the song to have different note densities. We're going to sequence that event now. I'm going to throw in a control sequencer. Now here in this control, because it's going to a binary thing, which is either on or off, if I click in the lower half of this box, it's going to turn it off. And if I click in the upper half, it's going to turn it on. But there's no gradient here. It's either off or on. If I connect this control sequencer to something which has a range of values, like this velocity density, which we've already set to 0.196. If I wanted to, I could mouse over it. I could make it precisely 0.2 by just putting my cursor over it, hitting the period, and then typing two, and then hitting enter. Now that value is 0.2. You don't have to click on these in order to change their value while typing. You just literally hover your mouse over it, type whatever you're gonna type and hit enter. So since this is at 0.2, when we drag this down and connect it, all of these values will be set to 0.2. We can see it's we're going quite rapidly because we haven't changed the interval that it's doing its thing at yet. So I'm gonna set this to half notes. And uh, we're gonna set this guy to four as well because of uh, tutorial purposes. Let's see, let's tighten all this up. Let's set this to four and we'll have it play 16th notes. Okay, so why don't we actually listen to a little bit of what we got going on here. We wanna be able to hear it. So we're gonna connect our sequencer to our cloud drum. We're gonna connect that to our gain. Now we can hear a sound. So if you wanna mute the whole system, you can just go down to this gain here 
and turn it off. That'll prevent any sound from coming through. We're going to leave it on for the moment here. Let's try and get this thing to produce some sound. I'm going to increase the amount of random uh, density here um, by hand. And I'm going to change this actually back to 16. See, I'm just clicking and dragging to adjust these. Let's change this to a less intense double synth. Where is one of the pad boys? And we'll go mute and short. Now we're going to have this thing's velocity change fairly often in, order, in terms of filling in these notes. As you can see in the areas where we have told it to have more notation, it has more notation. Okay. So now we've designed this pattern where it's going to play random collections of these notes, but we want it to also change the pitch and stuff too, because songs don't just play the same exact notes over and over again. Uh, we already know we can change that with a control sequencer. We're just going to pop one in. Okay, we made it the same as this sequencer, just to make it easier to, to do things that match up between the two of them. I'm going to set him on the pitch here. Bam. This guy here. We're going to rename him to velocity. Boom. Now he's called velocity. Click on the little flag here and we're going to rename him to pitch. Now we know what these controls are. How useful is that? Okay, now our pitch is changing. Now we have our velocity changing as well. If we wanted to, we could also tell the length to change. But let's say we don't always want the pitch to change. We want the pitch to change every once in a while. Well, there's a way to do that as well. Over here, the random pitch chance. All right, as lovely as this is, we're just gonna pause it here for a second. So if we put in another control sequencer, we're going to have this control sequencer change the random pitch chance. We're going to adjust it to match another one of our sequencers here, just for continuity's sake. So random pitch chance, the chance of it occurring. Uh, we'll have the pitch now change all the time. It's going to keep changing. It keeps sending a signal to change, except most of the time it won't change very much except every once in a while at the very beginning so here we'll keep it relatively low and then maybe a bunch of change there and it'll keep it low and a bunch of change there and we'll keep it low and then a bunch of change there and then we'll keep it low and then it'll change a lot at the beginning again Okay, guys. So altogether, you know how to use these buttons in order to induce random changes. You know how to use these sliders here in order to adjust how much of the change takes place. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do more instruments and how to create logic between them, which if it doesn't make sense now, trust me, it will. To everyone who subscribed from the first video, thank you so much. 
uh, it's great to see that there's some interest in learning how to do this. If you want to see more, subscribe. I'm going to try and put these out at least once a week until I have covered all the stuff that I personally know how to do. Uh, leave a comment if there's a particular question that you have about what we discussed. If there is something you've seen in something I've done that you want an explanation for, um, just let me know which, which setup it is and uh, I'll try to answer that question. Don't forget to give the video a like if you liked it. Every little bit counts for a small channel like this one. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.